one. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Interviewing the Legends. I'm your host, Ray Shasho. Michigan's legendary rock and roll guitarist and frontman Mark Farner is, has launched a long-awaited instructional video series, Farner Chords, a new video series where Farner gives a detailed look at the chords and techniques behind the hits. Uh, kicks off with people, let's stop the war. Uh, the single first appeared in the 1971 Grand Funk Railroad album, E Pluribus Funk. The video series is free and can only be accessed online at markfarner.com. Additional videos will roll out monthly. Mark says, I thought it was important to launch this video series to pay homage to all my musician friends around the world. I've had many tell me they love my music and dig playing the songs, but I noticed that some play the wrong chords in their versions. I didn't want to charge for these instructional videos because the freedom that music brings is exampled in the gift. They are for those musicians who desire to learn how to play the songs from one who wrote it. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome guitarist, keyboardist, singer, songwriter, best known as the original lead singer, songwriter, and lead guitarist for the hard rock band Grand Funk Railroad, which he co-founded in 1969 and is current group mark farner's american band rock patriot brother mark farner <laughs> all right brother ray good hey to man you. Good to you, <laughs> you know that was a very good idea you had with farner chords i i could use that i play some guitar and now i can play it right <laughs> awesome yeah man yeah so well, you got you got one of them out there so far right yeah yeah uh, we've got uh I think we got like 23 of them recorded and, you know, wow. stacked up. so we got plenty to, to work on. And, and you were, you were actually an instructor at the um, rock and roll fantasy camp as well. Oh yes, so You're used to being a teacher. I, I had David fish off on the show not long ago. He's a good guy. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. I love David. He's, he's a, he loves rock and roll, man. He does, and he's responsible for so many other things, you know, uh -huh. like Ringo's All Star Band, uh, yeah. um, the um, the one with the uh, I want to say Hippie Fest, probably Hippie Fest too, and oh, Happy Together tour. I Happy think he together, yeah he got that one together yeah. as well. Yeah. yeah. Um, how important as a guitar player? How important is it uh, to use the right effects and pedal setups on playing certain rock songs? it's uh it either makes or breaks it really That's how important it is yes because you, you've got such a very clean sound which i admire because there's a lot of shredders out there that got so much you know effects <laughs> on their guitar and you know it's not it to me that's not real playing you know you know yeah, it's, it's, yeah i i get it and and uh that's, I think that's why I never did like Marshall amps. Mm -hmm. you know, people that were playing them turn, turned them into this mush machine that if you looked at that fret, you know, it was singing out all these different uh, harmonics and, and carrying on without even touching it, you know. Um, that, it's okay for some people, for some songs, but for me, I, I'm more of a tone maniac. Mm -hmm. I love the tone of the strings. And I play uh Deodario EXL one forties because of the weight of them. Right. I, I, you know, on my rhythm chunks, I can't be using super slinky strings. Mm -hmm. They don't give me the tone. They just don't, and they don't hold up, you know, once half a set and they're gone. So the, the EXL 140s are uh, heavy bottom, you know, got, uh, I think it's like a 52 for the E string. That's, that's, I mean, that's heavy for an electric mm -hmm. guitar, yeah. but it it's holds up, man. It holds up and, uh, and in clean, nice and clean. Is that Betty? you're talking about yeah 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 that's a, that's my new fly yeah man my new 94 fly <laughs> i love it 
You know, I need a light guitar too, and I'm in the market because I've got I've got screws in my wrist. I'm right-handed. Oh. I've got oh. screws in my shoulder. Uh huh. And there's a lot of things I can't do anymore. I mean, I can't throw a ball right. I can't play golf anymore. It, you know, yeah. I was a baseball yeah. player. I can't can't swing a bat. Oh. So I need something light. You know. Yeah, dude. Absolutely. Well, I use a hardtail fly. I mean, a lot of people like the whammy bars, but I'm not into the whammy bars. It just puts unnecessary weight on the axe. Mm -hmm. uh, action that I get, you know, it's just hand vibrato when you're doing a, a lead or you're pulling it or pushing it, you know, get enough of that. And, uh, and that helps with the intonation, especially uh, because we got those Spurzel tuner keys on it. Right. What about strings? Um, if you want to play a lot of lead, what are the best strings? Should you get a lighter gauge, heavier gauge? No, I, I like the EXL 140 Deodorant. Okay. Man, those are exactly what I need. I mean, they're a little heavier for guys that are used to super slinky strings, but my strings sound way, way better. The more you can get you know, as far as the gauge, the more you can add to that string, brother, the more tone you're going to get out of it, period. Mm -hmm. You're working with magnetic pickups. Give them something to vibrate. Right, right. And it's interesting that you don't use a whammy, you know? Right. Yeah. I remember, you know, I, I love, used to love Jeff Beck playing because, first oh. of all, he never, he never used to pick, right? Yeah. basically and he and, but he used the whammy bar a lot but his yeah. technique was pretty cool yeah you know? he did things that nobody else can do with that whammy bar yeah yeah it was it's amazing part, yeah part of the breathing apparatus <laughs> <laughs> i really miss you know that that was a blow to rock and roll two oh. guys two guys i'm gonna miss that toured heavily was him and johnny winter you know because yeah. you always saw johnny on the road you know yeah Absolutely. Yep. Yep. Johnny Winter, uh, that Leland, Mississippi Blues. Oh my God. <laughs> Love that track, man. Yeah. It was great. All the stuff he did with Muddy Waters, also, yeah. you know. Yeah, dude. Well, I got some good things to say about, um, uh, I'm losing my mind now. Corky Lang. I had lunch with Corky. Ah, and, and your name came up and he said all great things about you, man. He said, Bless you're the most heart. wonderful guy, you know, beautifully spirited. You went on and on about you. Uh -huh. Bless his heart. I love Corky. He's a good guy. He really yeah, is. He is. He's, you know, uh, he's been around a long time, brother. He has. You guys probably play together a lot on the same bill, right? You yeah. And yeah. And, uh, and he would, him and Leslie would be into it on stage and Corky's like making like he's hitting the crash symbol, but he's throwing a stick, trying to hit Leslie. With <laughs> <a trick. laughs> oh my God. Oh. Yeah. I think I heard that before somewhere. That's funny. <laughs> now, when you were a kid, did you take guitar lessons? Did you read music? I don't know how to read music. Uh, <laughs> That's crazy. Took three lessons, and uh, the guitar teacher. It right. was it was pheasant season in Michigan. It was October twentieth. Yeah, and uh, he went out hunting and he shot himself in the foot with a twelve gauge. So he told my mother, "Wow, uh, he's going to be a long time healing." And for me to just go watch the the guys in the high school band that the, my sister hung out with, Diane used to hang out with these guys, and they taught her how to play. Uh, the drums don't pop, 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 pop. Yeah, and she could do that. And it, mm -hmm. but we, uh, I would go watch them, and and see the chords that they're making, and then I would go back home, and and then I finally I took my harmony guitar that my mother got me off a of Finger Hut catalog with a matching uh, amplifier. It had a huge eight inch speaker. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god and then they would show me oh yeah make this this is an a this and then the bar chords came and i went oh That's shit. It. yeah shit. 
Okay, well, then after I got the bar chords down, uh, things started to progress. Yeah. You know, 90% of the guitar legends that I interview, they don't read music. It's amazing. And, you know, I give you, I give you guys a lot of credit for picking things up by ear because I can't do it that easy. You know, I, I did take lessons. I can read some music, but the way you guys just pick it up, man, it's just, you know, it's amazing. You know, it's, uh, and, and a lot of people say, well, that's a gift. It I don't a, think, I I think don't, it is. I don't think it is. <laughs> I know? think, I think it's a talent. It's a talent for well, sure. It's a talent and a gift. Yeah. 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 It's talent. Now we all got talents. Right. But if you're saying gift and somebody starts telling you, oh, you got a gift of this and you start believing that, Flattery is as deceit. <laughs> when you start believing it, buddy, you start buying the hype. It's like, watch out. I yeah. got I want to stay down here with both my feet planted <laughs> in the earth, brother. It's a, it's still amazing to me. I, I talked to Randy Bachman. He says he hears the music in his head constantly, you know, it just comes to him. Yeah. Ronnie Montrose, I remember on this last tour before he passed away, he didn't read music, you know, I yeah. mean, all these guys, it's, 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 it's incredible. Yeah. I yeah. wrote a song on Ronnie's, uh, 10 by 10. Yeah. Uh, any minute. And right. he sent me, uh, Ray, he sent me the music. And as soon as I put it on, I, I could hear I heard the lyrics coming and, and I just started writing, man. It mm. took me, it took me maybe 10 minutes to finish it. Really? Yeah. It was just, uh. and a, a lot of people have told me that they like it. It's the best song on the album. Oh, wow. Cause it's saying something. Yeah. I was lucky enough to be on stage, uh, in Florida. He was playing in Largo and I was invited cause I interviewed him. And uh, his his wife is she's so nice. She's oh, very yeah. very nice. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, I got to watch him walk out on stage, you know, and the preparation and all that. It was really cool. He's he's such a nice guy. Yeah, yeah. Great. You got guy. some up, upcoming shows coming up. Um, April twenty first, I believe you're in in uh, Staten Island, New York. Yeah. Then uh, Westbury, uh, back in Michigan, I think after that Illinois. You'll be in a music festival coming up in July 29th uh, and then uh, August 5th, you have another in Kingsford. I didn't see any 4th of July dates. Usually you're somewhere on 4th of July playing. Yeah. Well, we're still open. <laughs> <laughs> you are the Patriot, you know, you're the rock oh, and roll yeah. Patriot, you know. Rock and Patriot, brother. Yes, yeah, sir. man. You play on Huckabee. I love Huckabee, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> He's such a cool guy. I like him. He is. He plays some guitar too, doesn't he? Yeah, the governor plays a bass, brother. Oh, he plays some bass, huh? Have you jammed with him? Yes. Oh, yes. Really? In fact, uh, the times that I've played on his show, he's been the bass player. Really? Is that right? Yeah, dude. Yeah. Oh, man. He's a great guy. I I really like I wish he was president. <laughs> he, he would make a good president. He's practical. Yes, he is. He's down to earth, you know, yes, he, he doesn't lie. <laughs> right. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, he, you know, it was a good, a great guitar player too. Um, I had an uh, electronic store in DC and Lee Atwater was a customer of mine. Remember him? Oh, he worked with Reagan, you know, yeah. he was like his right hand man. He was a great yeah. blues guitar player and he used to play right. with BB King and oh. all kinds of people. Cool. Yeah, he was a good, really good guitar player. I used to sell him some uh, headphones, all the best headphones at that time. Oh, I remember Scott Atwater. That was an outboard motor. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> For all the fishing enthusiasts. Yeah. Hey, yeah. you know, my buddy is Mark Bowser. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. He's a good guy, man. I've known Mark now for a while. He always, I mean, he worships you. <laughs> He's he is my brother, man. He's definitely my brother. We have done some fishing trips. We've gone so far out, man. Really? And I'm thinking, Lord, 
please don't let this GPS go down because we're <laughs> gonna be up shit creek, buddy. <laughs> no paddle. I, I got a good buddy who's into fishing and, and hunting in. He was my roommate up in D.C. He's Cuban, and I'm half Cuban. Uh -huh. And uh, he's crazy. I mean, he, he collects guns. He used to have a German uh, uh, hand grenade that he used to keep under his bed. Um, <laughs> but every time I'm with this guy, something like that would happen. You know, if I got on a boat with him, we'd be lost. We'd be out in the dark somewhere. The Coast Guard would come, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I've been there and done that, brother. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> so, well, Mark, Mark tells me some tidbits every time I interview you. Um, farmer Farner. Yeah, Farmer Farner. <laughs> Very cool. Farmer. I didn't know you were so into the love of farming. Yeah, and uh, a new uh, twist to it, Ray. Okay. It's electroculture. Right. Electroculture. It's been going on since like the 1700s. I never heard about it, but Lisa and I right. inadvertently had been doing this electroculture because mm -hmm. the way we put our garden up and the right. way we make uh, trellises out of a 16 foot hog panel fence that we bend like, you know, like a little Quonset hut. And right. we drive yeah. re rod in the ground a couple of feet to hold it in place. So there's a big antenna right there. Uh, and we, you know, I send garlic to Bowser. He loves garlic. And uh, we eat just enough to keep the vampires off. You mm -hmm. know, I like I grew 364 head last year. Wow. And we still got some. Uh, for our own personal stash, but we had to stop giving it away because my wife says, if you don't stop giving it away, we're not going to have any for seed. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I love gardening. What? So, so what are you, what are you growing out there? What else are you going to grow? Asparagus. Okay. Uh, tomatoes, uh, cucumbers, the uh, Mexican cucumbers, uh, mm. zucchini squash, summer squash. Nice. Uh, heirloom a variety of squash that looks mm -hmm. kind of like pumpkins right corn peas whole beans onions carrots potatoes uh man uh cayenne pepper mm. um strawberries yeah we we got pretty pretty well rounded our, our corn man last year the corn stood the the stalks were 12 feet whoa uh, and the ears were this big wow people that came over my neighbor says and he's a farmer this mm -hmm. is what he does he, he he's got cattle out there on the farm across from me and mm -hmm. he plants his corn but he came over and he looked at he says what the hell are you <laughs> doing with that <laughs> I, I told him i said you know it's just it's the ground where it's at but uh, we found out that this is the electro culture and he says oh mm -hmm. bullshit I mean, <laughs> yeah no it's for real dude it's for real uh but it, and you get ears of corn this big and this big around and it's all just sweet as sugar it's mm -hmm. real good and uh it makes a believer out of you and i love corn too yeah man you don't have to go to the market anymore that's over I, yeah, yeah. And the deer run in the back 40. so how do you keep the animals away do you got like a cage or something like a, a fence hog panel hog okay panel. the hog panel okay yeah and we got the hog panel on the outside and at the very bottom rate right the panels are this big so a rabbit can't get in there right um, maybe a little field mouse could get in there but but it's the rabbits that you want to <clears throat> keep out of the guard and the deer yeah so so the fences are we use t post which is a metal post and we drive them in the ground mm -hmm. and put the hog panel fencing up they're 16 foot sections and it's zinc coated steel so uh they're mm. 50 in, 50 inches and even though a deer could jump that 50 inches ain't shit for a deer really uh they haven't mm. they have not done it so uh and we've been here since 85 in this right. gardening so thank god yeah good soil man yeah buddy 
Yeah, that's why you and Lisa look so good. You're you're always trim, you know. You're like an athlete the way you look. Well, I appreciate that. You know, that, that, it's something to do with the genealogy too. I think it's. Oh yeah. 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 And and my my wife, man, she is on it. She's a she became a clinical dietitian. She went to school for it so yeah. that she could prescribe food for certain conditions right. and not get in trouble for it. <laughs> man i've been trying to lose weight i tried that nutrisystem i starved the food was inadequate <laughs> i was you know and i stay up till like four or five in the morning because i'm a writer and i do all yeah. kinds of stuff yeah but I, I get so hungry at nighttime but i cut down on a lot of stuff and i I'm, i still can't lose the weight you know it's, it's tough. i hear you it's tough when yeah. you get older it really yeah, is. It is. Yep, it sure is. But uh, are you, how much water are you drinking? That's it. <laughs> I don't <laughs> drink in, you're right. Yeah, Sometimes man. I can go without drinking water for a long time. Yeah, yeah. Don't worry about that. We, we need to, you know, if you could uh, step it up to a gallon a day mm -hmm. or, or something close to that and drop the wheat out of your diet. Right. About the bread, the cereal. You know, the, the wheat, the simple carbohydrates, that's where, uh, as we get older, older men put that belly on. And for a while there, you know, when the COVID bullshit hit, yeah. I, I had the COVID belly and I blamed it on COVID. I said, <laughs> you know, <laughs> everybody's blaming everything. I, I know. Right? So, uh, but I had the COVID belly and then uh, finally my wife says, you, you got to get back to your you know, logical eating them. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's all coming back to me now. But for a while there, I was just like, so pissed that these guys stopped me from touring and stopped me from playing. Yeah. But I yeah. wrote some, I wrote some good stuff in the good. time. Off. Good. Yeah, man. That's yeah. what happened during COVID. All these musicians, man, they were upset. They couldn't tour, but they wrote about a lot of good stuff. You know, they really did. Yeah, man. You know, it's kind of like, you know, back in the Vietnam War, people wrote a lot about the lyrics just came out of, you know, because of yeah. the war, you know. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. So people stopped the war. Exactly. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I got to I got to ask you one thing. I this is what I did recently. OK, um, I did talk to Grand Funk's manager. I, uh -huh. I emailed them. And I wanted to get Don Brewer and you, you together on a Zoom call to make yeah. peace. And this is what he said. Okay. He says, Ray, thank you so much for your note. I pre appreciate your business tact. As with any relationship, though, it's best to let those involved pilot. And that's what he told me. <laughs> <laughs> so so he, he doesn't want to get involved, I guess. I told him, you know how much money these guys could make if they actually got together and did a, a tour, you know, the original band. Oh, shit. You know, and I'm, yeah. I'm trying with Hart. I know the, all the guys from Hart. So, you know, I hook up with Roger a lot and his brother. And I know um, Steve Fawson and um, Michael DeRozier. So I've been kind of playing around with that too because i wanted to get hard back together too yeah man that's great somebody's got to do it I, I figured i'd be the mediator you know like the uh psychologist yeah well bless your heart i love it that you love the music this much ray i do and that you're real about it you you ain't you know making some show out of it because yeah. that those words i'm hearing come out of you uh are you that's the that's who you really are so God bless you, brother. Mark, I've done over 500 interviews over the last 10, 11 years, writing yeah. books and stuff, and I don't get a nickel. It's all yeah. for the love of music, okay? Hey, man, God bless you. I love, you know, since I was a kid, man. It, you, yeah. you guys saved my life. You did. You, you saved a lot of people's lives, you know? That's That's really closer to home. You know how many people, you know, they they start crying when, when they hear that song? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, brother. You know, yeah. it timelines a, a certain period of your life. It really yeah. does. Sure does. You know, I didn't know when you were doing, um, when you first, I guess, played the song out loud, 
closer to home. David Spiro heard it? Yes. I had David on the show not long ago. I didn't know that. Yep. I played it, and it, we were at his dad's television station. Exactly. I, I know all about that. Yeah. The Upbeat Show. Right. Yeah. And I'm playing it for David. And uh, Tommy Baker came over and said, what is that, dude? And I, and I said, well, it's a song that's closer to home. It's, we're going to record it, you know, next week at Cleveland Recording with Don Hammond over there. And he says, dude, I'm hearing, I'm hearing things with that song. And he, and he says, when you get to the, that last refrain, he said, just go on and on and on and on and over and over. And when you think you can't do one more, give me 10 more bars. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't have to think, what? <laughs> so when we got in the studio, that's what we did. We just kept going over and over and over. We had no idea what was to be there. You know, I just had confidence in Tommy Baker because he is a badass. Mm hmm. He played the trumpet with the mouthpiece was on a 45. It came out and went up in the air. So he's like always doing this and he always had that little, you know, that little goat <laughs> piece <laughs> hair there. And, uh, and, but man, listen to the strings, listen to the French horns and the oboes and the, oh my God. And those are all, analog instruments brother that's a real orchestra no that's an orchestra yeah, no yeah. synthesizer no yeah. <laughs> that's that's amazing i didn't know david was there to, to listen to the song yeah that's pretty yeah. cool yeah yeah david's uh he, he just wrote a book it's pretty good behind the wings or something like that so we i helped promote his new book Cool. Uh, when he was on the show, and of course he's you know he was in, involved with Dickie Betts and uh, Joe Walsh. You know he's got some yeah. great stories, you know. And I think he yeah. he's still kind of involved with Cat Stevens. Uh huh. And then Cat Stevens has a I, don't, I forgot his use have something your other name, but he's uh Cat Stevens got a new album coming out. Is what I understand. Great. Yeah. After all these years, man. Um, you did, you said something that was exactly my thoughts. Okay. I get so mad when there's no original members in a band. Yeah. I am so upset. And what you said is the dumb audience will listen to that band anyway. And just like, you know, listen to the music, like it, you know, it, and basically they're a, a tribute band. That's all it is. I mean, you go, go to a bar and hear the same damn thing, you know? Right. But it burns me up, man. And, you know, when I say you are Grand Funk, Peter Rivera, he is Rare Earth. And I told him that, you know, and he's, he goes through the same thing you do. He can't, he's, you know, the main guy, I think was Gil Bridges. I think he, he passed away and he still can't get the name. He's still working on right. trying to get the name. So right. I what feel about for you guys. Foreigner, and Foreigner, man, they, there ain't Foreigner. a rich there ain't an original member in the that incarnation that's out there, but because somebody owns the trademark, they can, it's ridiculous. They can front it off as that. I mean, oh God, when was it? Back, uh, oh, Gunnar Nelson. Yep. He he was on a, a, a show in Cleveland, Ohio. He was guest DJing, and he calls me up and he says, Farner, man, I just found something out. He says, you ain't going to believe this. I said, what's that? He says, you know, the, the group, the platters. Mm -hmm. I said, well, yeah. He says, there's 126 groups that go out <laughs> as the platters because this guy that owns the trademark licenses each one. Right. And he gets a pull off of every date that those 126 bands go and play. Wow. This guy gets a piece of it. That's crazy. It's it's it might be legal, but I yeah. want to ask him how honest is that? Right. right. And journey for God's sake, yeah. you know, Steve yeah. Perry. There ain't no yep. sub. I don't care, you know, how good you. He almost sounds like yeah, almost. Ain't I don't good. care. It's not yeah. him. No. <laughs> 
right on. You know, the guys from uh, Foreigner actually were talking about, yeah, when we were in the studio uh, writing so-and-so and so-and-so, you know, they, these guys have no clue. They didn't write any other songs. It's just stupid. <laughs> you know, Lou, Lou's pissed off. He, he, he ran it on Facebook, and some of the guys on Facebook were criticizing him for getting mad, and I came out and just blasted those guys. I said, he's, he's 100% right. What the hell are you talking about? Yeah, yeah. You know? Well, you always got the ones. It's like, you know, right now, people listen to the lame stream and they believe ABC, NBC, CBS, MSNBC, CNN. They, 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 they believe they all that shit. Yep. All that bullshit. They believe it. It's a and shame, so they man. buy into it. God bless them. Uh, but there's something that happens once somebody buys into something, they take it hook, line and sinker. Mm -hmm. It's very difficult, uh, near impossible for them to confess any wrongdoing because once they've taken it, the element of a person's pride jumps up there. Right. They're not going to say they're not even going to consider that your opinion, because it's not based on, the lies they came across lamestream. It might be just because you took some alternative course and got mm -hmm. the real deal news. Mm -hmm. But yet in my heart, I got to feel sorry for those poor saps yeah. that took the bait. Yeah. I do, you know, because if they had the right information and they were putting that much zeal into it, just think of how good this world could be, man. Yeah, you're right. Sometimes you know we think we think alike you know that politically and everything i've yes. i'm a diehard ronald reagan guy from way back <laughs> you know and i'm just i'm tired of everybody blaming trump give the guy a break already um i'm, I'm a desantis uh supporter here in florida he's done a lot of great things here in florida right on. Uh, you know he, he did get rid of all the permits on guns lately i don't know why he did that I, I had my permit, but now you don't need a permit to carry a gun. <laughs> I don't know if that's a little extreme or not, but that's American, uh, brother. That's American, yeah. That's really American. Yeah. And if if we were all armed, uh, <laughs> you know, the bad guys, the ones who gonna who take all these antidepressants and all yeah. this, shit, and then they go to, uh, bang bang shoot them up. It right. wouldn't, but maybe one. <laughs> shot and then everybody knows they draw it down on him boom he's gone yeah end of problem and and when you kill the bad guy here in florida it's okay <laughs> yeah it's, it's hey, okay it you know it that's the way it should be you know yes sir yeah it's it's funny how so many rockers i mean i just i just had neil smith on the on the show from you know the alice cooper drummer yeah, and he, he's he's a big. He's got a lot of guns. Awesome. <laughs> Good. Did Did you see the uh, the video that Kid Rock did about oh, yeah. Anheuser Busch? <laughs> <laughs> that yeah. was great. <laughs> oh, that was great. Hey, Unison, dude. Yeah. <laughs> and the, and uh, it, he turns that full automatic weapon loose. <laughs> And uh, yeah, that that was uh, hey, he's outspoken, is he not? Somebody he's has to be, yeah. right? Yeah, no shit. Somebody has to be. Crazy. I think I, I want to vote for you, Nugent, and Kid Rock. That'd be a great ticket. <laughs> Three Michiganders. <laughs> yeah, why not? Yeah. yeah, I'll go with that, man. Yeah. Um, Promote I heard that. you on the that what's that Promote that yeah <laughs> i heard you on an interview talking about billy graham i did not know that uh, that you did get kind of a uh envision with billy graham and yes. how much he touched you and and he touched a lot of people that guy drew millions in crowds you know it's just, he was an amazing guy yeah 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 and, but the the thing about the you know what what happens in this country and it's a, I, it's the only country i could tell you about because mm -hmm. i never really went to the churches in other country i'd go right. to check out the 15th century church while 
you know, but down by the Black Sea and in, in Pravdiv. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, to go to attend a church, what it turns out is if they operate under a 501c3 tax exemption, mm -hmm. they have given their authority over to the families mm -hmm. that own the Federal Reserve. Right. Now, I don't know about you, but those families are crazy as a shit house rat. Mm -hmm. They're bats. They mm -hmm. are the ones pushing the digital slavery. Right. And the churches give them the authority over their ministry? Are mm -hmm. you shitting me? <laughs> this is insanity. Yeah. And if Jesus was on this planet, yeah. He, I'm sure that he didn't say, now run along, boys, take your money changing to out to the street. He was kicking ass and saying, get out of here, you sons of bitches. And right. yeah, and throwing the money changers out because, dude, when it comes to uh, love and real love, mm -hmm. the church is love mm -hmm. and God is love and love is unconditional. Sure. But to, but you don't get that out of these churches who operate under a 501 C three, because they got to make some money. They pass that plate, you know, in second Corinthians, it says, don't give being compelled to give. Mm -hmm. Don't give begrudgingly give from a cheerful heart. Cause God loves a cheerful giver. But when was the last time you ever went to one of them 501 C three churches or listen to somebody who's got a ministry the right. survival one C3 that they weren't begging for money or it's passing. Right. And it's all compelling to give, give, give. I think it's all horse shit, shit, shit. It is. It is. It's, it's obvious to yeah. me and you. It is. Yeah. But, <laughs> you but we need a real church, man. And get rid of these phony churches that gave their authority to yeah. men, to men. Yeah. Oh, this crazy. guy, a lot of people like to, you know, what's his name? Joel Osteen. This guy's Sorry. rich as hell, you know? That's ridiculous. Sorry. Sorry. No, me yeah. either. I think this yeah, guy should be in jail. That's you know? theater. It's theater. It is that's theater. I, I agree. Yeah, man. George George Carlin used to talk about that. He was, he was pretty funny talking about that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. George, George really got uh, round up, wound up on a lot of issues. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, he was very outspoken about that. Very. Things. Very outspoken. Yeah. I love his take. I love the way he put it out there. Yeah. It's a club. Yeah. And you don't belong to it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> he said it like it was. My uh, Billy Graham story didn't end too well. Um, in 1970, well, you know, my dad owned retail electronics stores and he, in DC, uh, I mean, we had everybody come to the store, but. It was 1970 and he decided, I used to work there every Saturday as a kid. We decided to go to the mall on 4th of July. It was called Honor America Day. Billy Graham was the headliner. Bob Hope was gonna be there and Margaret. I wanted to go because of Anne Margaret. Yeah, of course. <laughs> you know? So anyway, we're, we're there waiting for the show to start and all of a sudden tear gas. <laughs> starts coming our way Ooh, remember the yippies the, the, the yeah, yippies were a little bit radical you yeah know, they, they started were. trouble with the cops and stuff yeah. the hippies were cool the yippies were yeah. you know kind of <laughs> leftists i guess but they were throwing rocks at cops and they tear gassed them and all that smoke came our way and hundreds oh of us including oh children God. we started to run in like crazy man because that shit just burns your eyes you know oh yeah no, we didn't get to see the show <laughs> <laughs> you know it would have been a great yeah. show you know yeah, kind of like antifa did yeah exactly you know but uh we were in in italy playing a baseball stadium humble pies on stage right and uh it's sold out and there's thousands of fans on the outside that want in so the national guard shows up they shoot tear gas over the wall into the stadium yeah and it's it's like why are they shooting inside i know 
they wanted to stop that show. Right, sure. Oh, buddy. Yeah. And they succeeded in their endeavor. But we were down in the, you know, where the dugout is, and that shit falls down. And we were just falling our faces off. And you can't rub it out of your eyes. It just makes it hurt worse. And we were gagging, trying to get a breath. Horrible. Man, that's that's some terrible shit. Yeah, I know. It's on the internet too. If you look at that event, you know, you uh -huh. find out exactly what happened. Just, you know, the, the, the cops didn't, they shouldn't use tear gas, you know, <laughs> and the way the wind was blowing too, you know, because it affected a lot of kids. There's a lot of kids that just wanted to see, you know, Billy Graham, you know, yeah. a lot of churchgoers that wanted to see Billy Graham. Yeah. There's a lot of people there too. Mark, I'm, I'm 64 years old and starting to get a little. Starting to get a little nervous. <laughs> My wife is four years older than me. All right. Um, you know, life is flying. You know that. Oh, God. How do you handle getting old, older, man? I know well, maybe your faith, I guess, or. It, well, the, the older you get, Shasho, it's a, it, the faster it goes. The older you get, the faster it goes. And this is what I have come up with. My my wife, who's 13 years younger than me, is now saying to me, I get what you mean mm -hmm. now when Down. you see the older you get, the faster it goes. It's, uh, you know, we had a lot of fun when we were young. We were more, you know, free to do things in our mind. Right. But we, we become cluttered with all of this debt consciousness, even if, you don't want to go out because you don't look a certain way. You put yourself in debt to that shit. Or if you, if you hold yourself in a, a state of regret, that's mm -hmm. debt consciousness too. Or if somebody puts you on the shit list because you didn't fulfill some expectation they right. had of you, that's, that's a debt. And then they got the financial debt. And it's all this debt. Uh, that is really what I think uh, that aging thing. It's an accumulation of every indebtedness that we ever encountered during our lifespan. And here we are, and it's accumulative in its nature because it keeps weighing our ass down. Yeah. More debt. Well, we got to set ourselves free. Mm -hmm. Seriously, Jesus said, set yourself free. Just like Bob Marley. Mm -hmm. Set yourself free. That's right. You know, uh, there is a freedom that's available to anybody that wants it. And that's all you got to do is love yourself enough to set yourself free brother yeah then that that shit don't mean i mean you know we're all checking out right yeah right come on we're yeah. all we're all going i know <laughs> so, so it, it's an it's inevitable yeah. so uh embrace it uh because i'm gonna tell you something when i died back in 2012 when i had this pacemaker yeah. put it uh, it's so good on the other side, brother. You're going to go, oh, my God, I'm home, dude. Mm -hmm. It's like this is where we came from exactly. before we were put into these bone suits. Yep. And uh, it's a, it's and that's how good love is. It's unconditional. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You don't even have to say all of these things or jump through all of these hoops and do all of that shit. That's just what religion demands of you. Love demands nothing of right. you. If you embrace it, man, it is a rewarder that's it's it's unavoidable. And you no one can give you this mm -hmm. like you can get it from God, who is love. Sure. It's unconditional, man. It's it truly is. So uh it wouldn't matter if it did matter, brother. Yeah, you're <laughs> right. You got a great attitude, man. You you should be a pastor, honestly. <laughs> You're, you're great. You, I love your words, man. Thank you, brother. You, you know who talks a good game um, is uh, Frank Marino. You ever talk to him about religion? No. Oh, he studies it. He, he, uh, you know, he'll, he'll talk to you for hours about it. He's, he's awesome. good. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. He, he's a good, he's really intelligent when it comes to that stuff. But you're, yeah. you're, you're, you're natural. You, you feel it in the heart. You know what I mean? That's what yeah, my wife but, says. She knows she knows there's a God because she feels God every day, you know? Yeah. In your heart. Yes. Absolutely. And I don't and I don't reserve my prayer time for mm -hmm. 
when I lay down, I, I'm praying. I was praying before right. I got on here with you. I said, Lord, please let that son of a. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Love you, Love you. <laughs> who, who are the guys that influenced you music wise? And, and what was your first concert when you were younger? Yardbirds. Oh, that was your first show, huh? Wow. Yeah, man, that was it. And Jeff Beck stood that telly on its edge, dude. Right. And he's got the amp just cranked to, to, to everything is on 11. And he's back going like, like he's the one making that guitar do it. But it was the sheer volume and the strings were just, yeah, wow, yeah. just, just going crazy. And I saw some showmanship. Mm -hmm. I said, man, I like that. I like that. He's putting on a show. It's like, it, there's some theater in here and uh we were at the ima auditorium in flint michigan and it was the pack mm -hmm. it was the the band that fronted uh for terry knight right and, you know we backed him up and uh and we were side stage watching these guys mm -hmm. we were let in because our manager had something to do with the the show going on and the, and so the band got to stand side stage and watch this yard bird performance. But as soon as they were gone, they were in the limo and gone. Really? We said, let's go up to the dressing room. So maybe they left something. We go up in there and we're looking around and there's this funny smell in there, Ray. <laughs> <laughs> so we like bloodhounds. We're, where is that? What is that? What is that? We opened the, little door where it goes across the top of the ropes and that where the the uh you know curtains and everything go back and here's this roach laying there mm -hmm. <laughs> and we said ah our first taste of sin. <laughs> that was the first time huh <laughs> yeah dude <laughs> that's funny that was it yeah i still talk to jim mccarty he's a, he's in my book he's a good guy nice yeah. guy He's the only one left in the band, but I'm not going to say anything because I like Jim. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know? Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. He's a good guy. Um, I asked you this question several times before, but I always ask it, and I get some interesting answers. Let's see if your answer has changed. If you had a Field of Dreams wish, like the movie, to perform with, collaborate with, anyone from the past or present, who would that be? Actually... I would, uh, now that I've thought about it for all these years, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Howard Tate, man, he was my favorite mm. singer of all time. Uh, John Hall, or is it Daryl Dar Hall? Daryl Hall? Daryl Hall, yeah, all yeah. All the notes, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think uh because of their what they put out mm -hmm. that uh we would put out something that people would just dance their asses off to because mm -hmm. i i love to dance and that's what i endeavor to do with my music is is drive people to the frenzy of dancing it off mm -hmm. yeah and uh yeah you know, aretha franklin it would have been great to write something with her you know johnny winter yeah. You got that R and B in your blood because you're from Michigan, man. Yeah. You know? Yeah. You know, me, me being from DC, I've got the same thing. You know, I Yeah, it's brother. pretty cool. You know, I I, I love R and B music. I really do. Yeah. You know? uh, it, it has uh it has a lot to do with with you know, I mean, with more people than you think. Janice Joplin did a rendition of Get It While You Can. Howard Tate's mm -hmm. song, Get It While You Can, and, and it's on one of the live albums, and she does the shit out of it, man. Yeah. You know? And, she, was a, and, she was a friend of yours. Yes. Yeah, she was yeah. a good friend of yours. You told me that that funny story about her d doing Mick Jagger's pants with a chocolate oh, yeah. bar. <laughs> yeah. I love that story. That's great. Yeah. Getting on the helicopter, right? Yeah. <laughs> the British invasion, you know, the British invasion actually happened two days before Christmas in 1913 when the Federal Reserve Act. <laughs> That's right. That's that great. 
British invasion. <laughs> but these English bands that come and sing their songs in American English. Yeah. How much of an invasion is that? Right. You know, uh, imitation is the most sincere form of flattery. Right. Exactly. You know? Thank God, brother, you and I, we don't have to fake the accent. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, it's funny that when everybody was into the Beatles back in, uh, I mean, you know, I I watched the Beatles on Ed Sullivan when I was young, too. And so I went through yeah. that whole thing and everything. Yeah. But, but there was a point like in the 60s, like the late 60s and stuff, I, I was more into like the Turtles you guys, you know, the zombies, you know, uh, yeah, yeah. There's some great bands out there. And I wasn't, I wasn't one of those guys hooked and so fascinated with the Beatles that, that they were like gods to me. I didn't, I never did follow that, you know, yeah. I really I, don't. I wanted them to go back out on the road when right. they were all still sucking air, just so I could go check out a concert. Right. I was that much of a fan. I never bought a record. Yep. Never bought a Beatle record. I listened mm -hmm. to a lot of Beatle songs on other people's record players, but, and that's where I got, you know, the appreciation for some of their music. But I thought, why don't you guys just bury the hatchet Yeah. Go back out for us fans. Right. Get to see you guys live. Yeah, exactly. And, and so now in the position that I'm in, with the f-a-u-x funk right uh, it's the same thing i can yeah. understand why people are saying why don't you guys just bury the hatchet and get back out there it's uh a friend of mine who works uh, he's a undercover kind of dea mm -hmm. your home city there in dc mm -hmm. he told me finer it was premeditated. The guy pulled it off. Mm -hmm. How bad do you think he's going to want you to be around him? He thinks you're like him and that you'll retaliate in some way. Trust me. And I thought at that time, damn, that's it. Yeah. I yeah. didn't even think of it from that slant, but that's what yeah. you get from a DEA agent. You got screwed though. The, oh, the, the band screwed you, the judge, you know, yeah. with the name. That was, you know, I, I hate that stuff, man. And same thing with Peter Rivera. I mean, you know, he, he is rare earth. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you know? It's the same thing, man. You yeah. are Grand Funk. You, you wrote all the songs. Thank you. You know, and, and I didn't know this about Jack Bruce. I talked to Jack Bruce the, the year before he passed away. He wrote most of the songs in Cream. Yes, he did. Know? Yep. But he didn't get the credit. Everybody's, you know, Eric Clapton, Eric Clapton, Eric Clapton, you know? Yeah. 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 It's a shame, man. You know? I'll yeah. probably go down that way, too. I'll do a thousand interviews. Nobody will know me. <laughs> <laughs> Same thing. <laughs> That's all right. I don't care, man. <laughs> I want to be like Farner. <laughs> hey, we're going to have a good time, Brother Ray. Yeah, man. Hey, next time you go fishing with Mark... Yeah. Oh, you know, I'm I'm only like an hour and a half away from him, north. Oh, okay. Sarasota, Sarasota cool. Bradenton area, you know. Cool. But just don't yeah. go out a hundred miles. Yeah, man. That's I, that's what I told him last time. Yeah. His brother-in-law really likes to get out there. I guess there's some certain reefs that you hit. Right. You're, you're gonna catch fish. I mean, there's know? some big sharks out there too. Yeah. <laughs> you know. There's some great whites out there and stuff. Yeah. I think his daughter goes out with him too, right? He's got some pretty yeah. daughters. Yeah. 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 And, and I uh, met his wife. Uh, Allie. Yeah. They're real and nice man. people. Yeah. He's still yeah. a real. Is he still in real estate? Uh, yeah. To, to, uh, he's kind of retired. Okay. But, he, but I think once you're in real estate, you're and something comes along you're apt to just jump in there because it's your nature yeah. and, and you, who, who doesn't like a little reward now and then? Sure. Definitely. <laughs> you know? Yeah. But every face, every time he posts something on Facebook, it's him cooking. Yes. I mean, he, you know, he, life, life is good. He likes, he, he likes to enjoy life, which, you know, I, I live yeah. vicariously through him. <laughs> 
and he's a good cook. Yeah, he really is. Yes, he is. I was at deer camp and he said, bring some steaks down. Cause there's a steak uh, place over by us. That's mm -hmm. puts out some really good local meat. Yeah. I took a bunch of steaks down to deer camp and, wow. and Bowser did the magic to them. And everybody's like, mm. eat, and it's all like running down. Our <laughs> <mouth>. <laughs> ah. <laughs> he said he's coming up to Michigan soon, right? Yeah. yeah yeah april yeah yeah or is it may i don't know it could be yeah. may yeah. yeah yeah he's a good guy i like mark yeah well i want to say very special thanks to melissa kachurik and you say yeah. her name like a sneeze <laughs> <laughs> she, she puts that on her website it's so That's funny great kachurik Mel Mel melissa's yeah. cool yes she, she is she's with moxie publicity and she arranged this interview today with brother Mark. He's the uh, best. Everybody needs to go and go check out Farner Chords. Um, I'm you. definitely going to learn some stuff. Thank you, brother. It's a free video and it's on Mark's website. Uh, additional videos will roll out monthly. And just go to Mark's uh, website, www.markfarner.com. And there's actually... Uh, a separate page, I guess, for the Farner Chords, which is markfarner.com backslash Farner Chords backslash. Yeah, and, it's at markfarner.com. And right. I might also mention, Brother Ray, that mm -hmm. all the stuff that is in my store is USA made. I have never put my name on foreign material. I always have it. I, I dig and find somebody's got to be able to supply me with USA. I want to support my country. God bless so you. I thank all of those who are watching, listening, uh, who have purchased from our store. And I want to encourage those who are watching, listening to go over there and check it out because we are giving, uh, a shirt to these veterans organizations for every shirt that's purchased. We'll give one uh, to like veteran support foundation who helps these vets get back on their feet. Uh, we always want to be able to do that and, and turn it around and mm -hmm. show people how to support our country. Because if we want a great country, right. We got to support it, brother. Exactly. 100%. God bless you, man. Thanks, my, my dad was a, a Marine, World War II. He just passed away last year, but he was, he was 97, you know. Wow, man, that's my, awesome. My brother was in Vietnam. I almost joined the Navy. I got talked out of it by some couple of Navy SEALs who were stationed in Hawaii. I don't, to this uh, day, I still don't understand that. And your mom built tanks, right? Yeah, she <laughs> built it on Sherman tanks. Brother. That's right, man. How cool is that? Yeah, and my I can see her on a poster, you know, like this. You know? <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. You know, I also want to mention everybody needs to buy from Chili with Love. That's a fantastic DVD. Uh, it's it's Mark Farner at his finest. The crowd was incredible. I just I love it the way they were doing like that soccer thing. The soccer, yeah, yeah. yeah. great crowd over there. And loving it. Yeah, rock and roll. Hold and everybody, up. yeah, everybody can go on your website to, to also buy that and check out Mark Farner on tour on the dates that he's going to be at. And I hope you come back to Florida soon. You're, you know, we we support you here in Florida. You you come to Clearwater a lot. You've, you know, we love you in Clearwater. Okay, awesome. So yeah, man. Can't we hope to, to see you again. Yeah, yeah, love man. The audiences, you know, a lot of Floridians came from michigan too they're and all from our, michigan here <laughs> our, canadian, our canadian brothers and sisters too you know i got a lot of good canadian friends that moved to florida so uh yeah yeah i got a i got a second home down there that, you need a second home down here yeah you know, to get away from the snow and the cold weather and stuff it, it, that is more inviting every year <laughs> yeah i think lisa would like it <laughs> No kidding, brother. Then I can hang out with you. Yeah. <laughs> I think my wife, Sharon, and Lisa would definitely hit it off. Yeah. 
Yeah. I take her with me when we go see Corky, you know, and uh -huh. yeah, she's, she's met so many rock stars. We, we hung out with Eric Burden, Alvin Lee backstage. She gets kisses from everybody, you know, uh -huh. Tom Jones kissed her, um, Eric Burden kissed her, uh, um, Henry Winkler kissed her. I wanted, I wanted, we, we met um, Anne Margaret. She played uh -huh. here in Sarasota. We were on the front row. She came out. And she hugged my mom and dad and shook my hand. It was my birthday. And I was waiting for my wife to say, it's my husband's birthday, so I can get a kiss from Ann Margaret. Didn't yeah. happen. Didn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't happen. <laughs> you know? Sure, you can kiss Tom Jones and all these other guys, but I, I can't kiss my, my crush, Ann Margaret. <laughs> yeah. That's great, dude. I know, man. Brother Mark, thank you. God bless you. Give my best to Lisa. All right. She's a, a wonderful, beautiful woman. Thank and, you. Uh, keep doing what you're doing, man. You're great. All right. I appreciate it, Brother Ray. Good to be with you again. All right, God man. You. Thank if you. I if I don't see you in the future, I'll see you in the past year. I hope. Yeah. <laughs> sure. See For you, Mark. Sure. Oh, bye, see you, man. Buddy.